Welcome everyone. Um, today I'm going to do really what I'm going to call a special reading. Um, today is um, my son's birthday. Um, as many of you know, he um, crossed over on February 12th, 2018. And um, I know a lot of you have also lost children, you know, loved ones, and have a hard time getting through. Um, I actually just put out in the comment section a video I did. I don't even know how long it was after he passed. Um, but, you know, I don't want to make this sad. I really want to make this more about how you can how you can find your faith even after the fact um you know i feel like god put it in my heart that you know gave me the opportunity to keep on keep on doing what i'm doing to keep on moving in life and just knowing that you know when when it's my time i already know he'll be the first one to greet me um and you know i take great comfort in that so Really what I'm doing today is I am doing a spiritual reading. I'm leaving it open to our beautiful guides. Um, and many of you know, many of you hear me talk about Steve often. Um, today is his birthday. I don't know if I said that. Um, so really what I'm just, I guess the reason why I'm doing this reading is, first of all, I felt called to do it. Um, really for those who, you know, you know, I don't want to say the pain goes away, but um, I guess when you keep your faith strong, then you know that you're going to meet again, that you'll be together again, and that's truly what I believe. Um, I have to say that he has brought me some amazing signs. Um, one of them I did in Leah reading where, you know, I'll try to make the short the story short, but um, one of our beautiful beautiful subscribers, Diane, who definitely channeled my son, and um, it was interesting because I feel like I think it was the first time that she ever told me that she was channeling him, and she left me quite a beautiful message from him, but there was something. Um, something that she said in in that in that um message and i can't remember if she said like i think she said that steve was going to move like mountains to get me a sign that was going to be undeniable and then i then i reached out to my daughter and i sent her a copy of that message and you know my daughter just wanted to protect me a little bit so she said just be careful you know that it's legitimate. And then um, after that, my boyfriend walked in and he said, look what I found um, on the side of the road. Like someone was just throwing away this beautiful guitar, which I now, I display it proudly. Um, because I feel like Diane said something about a guitar um, but just that he brought in a guitar, and that is the same make and model that my son had, one of his favorite guitars. Um, you know, and so then I remember I then, I messaged my daughter again, and, and um, I said, you're not going to believe what Sam just brought, what Sam just brought me. And she said when she saw my message, she scrolled down. And she saw a message that said, Guitar Sam, or not Guitar Sam, Guitar Tom. And this is someone who had given her lessons years ago. Um, and she's, she was like dumbfounded, like, why am I getting a message from him? Um, and then she read my message where I literally told her that Sam brought, brought me this guitar. And I knew without a doubt it was from my son. Um, and then that verification, when my daughter said that she saw the name Guitar Tom, um, 
you know, with someone she hasn't talked to in years. And there was no message. There was no message. So I know that was Steve trying to give her confirmation also. Um, And she had told me that she had watched two different readings the day before where they kept talking about a guitar and they didn't know, like the reader had said, I don't even know why I keep talking about this guitar. And it didn't register with Jenna at the time. Jenna's my daughter. Um, But then after, you know, we put all the pieces together, it's like, did he move mountains to bring me that guitar? He absolutely did. Um, And he just put it in Sam's pathway. Um, And I mean, you know, so I'm telling you this story because I want you to understand that You know, our loved ones are always with us and um, sending us messages and sending us signs. Sometimes we can't pick those up. Sometimes we're in so much sorrow that it's hard to see the signs. But I feel like the day comes when you're more open to it. Um, So anyways, I felt very inspired to do this reading today on his birthday. Um, I did put that video out. And, you know, I was torn whether to put it out because um, it was like it was very soon after his passing and it was sad, you know, it was a sad video. But really what I the reason I put it out is because I talk about him so much. I see his birthday in our reading so much that um, I just know that he's part of our spiritual team. I know that he's constantly uh, part of my reading. So I wanted you to know him um, a little deeper. So anyways, this reading is going to be completely open to our beautiful spiritual guides, bringing us any messages that we may need to hear right now. Um, And again, you know, it's for everyone, but for those who, you know, have lost someone and maybe you're just having a hard time, um, I feel like, I feel like this is why I'm doing the reading. Um, but again, it's for everyone. I, I feel like who hasn't lost someone, right? Who hasn't lost someone? Um, but I feel like I, like, I feel mothers. I feel fathers. Like I feel, um, I feel the energy of like people that we truly, truly loved. I feel husbands. I feel wives. Like all of a sudden I'm feeling all these different people with different titles. Um, So I'm just going to go ahead and clear my mind. And we're just going to start the reading. And I have no expectations. Um, I just feel like I'm meant to do it. I'm sorry for the long intro, but I really want you to know why I'm doing this reading. Um... And um, we're going to use four different decks. I'm going to go ahead and start the reading. We're going to use something told me to bring out Archangel Raphael. So we'll use Archangel Raphael, not use them, but we will um, get Archangel Raphael's word of advice. Of course, we're going to use Mother Wor- Mother Mary for her words of wisdom. Um, for the main spread, we're going to use the Psychic Tarot. It was really calling out to me. And it's interesting. I was going to use the Gilded Tarot um, to clarify or go deeper. That's what I like to say, go deeper. But the Tredivia Tarot was like, no, no, I'm your I'm your deck. Use me. So we will put them to the side. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring the lid down. And again, I just want you all to know that, you know, I love you so much. Um, your guides love you so much and, you know, I don't want to make this sad. I want to, I want this to be, um, hopefully inspiring and, um, loving. So let's go ahead and open up the reading. We're going to start with, start with the Archangel Raphael. And of course, everything is always pre-shuffled. This is really when I'm meditating, um, you know, inviting my guides in. I feel like my guides definitely speak to your guys. I have no doubt. You know, it took me it took me a few years to really trust that. But 
uh, you know, it's like undeniable to me now. So I'm not going to try to deny it. All right. Archangel Raphael. All right. We got a few. But I never turned them down. All right. Meditation. You know, it's interesting because that's really what I do, so to speak, um, before I begin a reading, you know, as I'm just shuffling the cards, I'm paying attention to everything that like certain cards that keep coming out. Um, but meditation here, Archangel Raphael, please meditate with me and guide my mind and body to focus upon peace, peace, health and wellness, peace, health and wellness. It's that quiet mind. Alternative medicine. Dear Archangel Raphael, thank you for guiding me to the ideal healing treatment and for giving me clear signs and messages to validate the best path for my well-being. The best path for your well-being. Alternative medicine. I feel like we're moving more and more into that modality. Acceptance. I don't know that I've ever gotten this card before. Acceptance. Dear God and Archangel Raphael, please help me accept that everything is going in the right direction. Acceptance. Meditation, alternative medicine, and acceptance. And we're going to keep these out. All right, let's bring in Mother Mary. We'll give it one more shuffle. All right. You know, I had a dream um, probably a year before my son passed, and it was my mother who had already crossed over, and she brought to me this little boy. And in my dream, I remember I didn't understand, like, who is this little boy? But he, had, but this little boy had his arms, like, wide open, like he wanted me to hug him. So I did in my dream, um, but, my God, it felt so real. And when I hugged this little boy, I felt like the purest of love, like a type of love I don't know that we can feel here on earth. Um, it was just so pure, so beautiful, and I've never forgotten it. I've never forgotten the way it's made me feel. And now when I look back at that dream, I know it was a message from my mother um, letting me know, you know, like I didn't know that my son was going to, pass at that time um but that you know now it gives me a sense of comfort knowing that she was there and i know that little boy was my son and it really was just you know pure love and it's funny because diane who does channel my son that was one of her messages um that he's surrounded by love that he is love. And that made me so happy. All right, Mother Mary. Caring. Heaven cares for me, and I keep my heart open to caring for others, myself, and the world. Let's see if anything else wants to come out. Oh, wow. Miracle. Miracle. I trust in God to know the perfect solution to this situation. Miracles. Wow. I feel like we're going right to the top. Heaven cares for me, and I keep my heart open to caring about myself, others, and the world. You know... I feel like a lot of people ask, like, you know, what is my purpose? And I feel like that is our purpose. That is our purpose. You know, I don't feel like God is, like, um, writing down, like, everything you've accomplished. Like, I became, you know, I did this with my life. I, I feel like it's more about 
how you treated your fellow man, you know, did you give a hand up to someone who truly needed it? Um, I feel like that is the type of energy that God really cares about. But miracles, that feels good. That feels good. All right, let's bring in the psychic churrow. And again, I kind of like argued with myself in a way like, do I really want to use a psychic churro for this? But it kept calling to me and, um, you know, I've really learned to listen to my intuition. So this is why we're using it. All right. Material and spiritual prosperity. This is the Six of Wands. You know, it's interesting because this person is looking out at, really, I feel like the life that they've created. Um, and yes, maybe material-wise, but I feel like spirituality. You know, like how I have grown my life through my spirituality. I feel like there's, you know, a sense of being proud of your accomplishments. You know, I feel like maybe that's what heaven's doing, recognizing your accomplishments. It's funny, I just said how God doesn't really measure it um, by that. But, you know, it doesn't mean like you're not here to, um, you know, like I think of like a life path eight. They're really here to build up their material world, but not in a like me, me, me type of way. Um, but that is, you know, part of what they're here for. Your life path number will reveal a lot to you. But material and spiritual prosperity, miracles. Listen, maybe some of you don't feel like you're in that energy yet. And that could certainly talk about um, what the miracles are. You know, open yourself up spiritually. And I just feel like when you do that, first of all, I feel like you're much more open to the signs that really heaven continuously sends to you, your spiritual team. Um, you know, remember that you're a spiritual being having human experiences. You know, the spiritual part of you is the soul's intellect. So, and our human, our humanness can certainly get lost, you know, within this, this earth, within, you know, the good and the bad and all that. But if we remember that we're spiritual beings having human experiences, I feel like that helps us get through so much more. And again, that spiritual being is the soul's intellect. All right. We have the chariot. It's called triumph here. This really speaks about unlimited potential. And I find it interesting that it's following material and spiritual prosperity. You know, again, I feel like that spiritual part of us, it's really important to understand, uh, especially when we're feeling lost in the world, that you are this spiritual being. Six, seven, foundation and achievements. And then rejoice in celebration, three cups. Three Cups is mirroring uh, the Six of Wands, material, spiritual prosperity. You know, it's like uh, like miracles is making more and more sense. Um, and I don't feel like miracles just like, you know, just out of the blue, I get a miracle. No, I feel like it's because of the effort that I put in, you know, um, maybe because I have opened up my spirituality. You know, I'm not really a religious person. Um, but I'm definitely a spiritual person. Six 
So there's going to be a reason to celebrate, you know, and then that's it, bringing me back to the chariot because what we want to remember in the chariot's energy is it really is about finding balance within. Um, it's our intentions that move that chariot, not the reins of the horse. You know, I tell the chariot where to go. And when I find when I find balance within myself, then I feel like then there's unlimited potential on how far I can go. There really is no limit. We're limitless. Three of Cups, Rejoice and Celebration. You know, it is the energy of joy. Um, it's funny, I'm just looking at this line, three, four, six, seven. What's the only thing that's missing? A five. Well, five is about change. But maybe some of you have already made some type of a change. And, you know, it probably has done you well. All right, look at this. Passion ignited. Passion ignited. This is the Ace of Wands. This is an energy of action, but it's also the energy of being inspired by who? By your spiritual team. You know, um, I feel like the Ace of Wands is like we have to reach out and grab it. Other words is we have to put action behind it. Um, some of you, this can talk about like, you know, all of a sudden you start getting these ideas, these epiphanies. Um, maybe you've been wondering, should I follow that? You know, maybe I'm, I'm dissatisfied with the way my life looks right now. Am I able to make changes? I feel like your spiritual team is like, well, we're going to help guide you. This person's heart chakra is being activated. And, you know, because this is a spiritual reading, I feel like it's your spiritual team just reminding you um, how much they love you, but also how involved they are in your life. Again, material and spiritual prosperity. So that spirituality really opening up and then mirroring rejoice and celebration and then this Ace of Wands, it does feel like guidance, true guidance. We have the tower. Now, don't freak out because you know what I feel like this is the tower is right now? I feel like this is all the times that maybe we have fallen. You know, all the things that didn't work out. The things that, you know, didn't work out. And then we may tell ourselves, well, if that didn't work out. Then the next thing's not going to work out. I feel like the tower, though, really many times is our saving grace. And that may sound, sound strange to some, but... You know, I feel like in the tower, sometimes our guides are making us feel uncomfortable in something. And that is to help us to move from it, move away from it. Chariot's right above it. So I feel like easily, well, I shouldn't say easily, but, you know, the ability to recover from these towers. It really talks about, well, says it right in the card, disruption. And I feel like not allowing these towers to stand in the way of really our material and spiritual prosperity. You know, I get the feeling like some of you may have, um, you know, something may have changed in your life. And you may be in like the energy right now, like, I don't understand it. I don't understand why it had to change. But I feel like if you trust you know, trust in God, trust in your spirituality, the answer is going to come to you. Not only is the answer going to come to you, but I feel like the way, the new direction, something that, um, again, is going to give you a reason to celebrate. And let's not forget, that is the energy of joy. So... Power can certainly talk about those that we've lost because this is the type of reading we're doing. But the connection right next to it kind of feels beautiful. All 
All right, well, look at this, the Ace of Pentacles. So, this is like saying, I'm not going to let the towers take me down. I am not going to let previous disruptions stop me from creating the life that I want for myself. You know, the Ace of Pentacles talks about something that's coming into your physical world. We we already know it's going to be something worth celebrating. Something is going to bring joy to your heart. Ace of Pentacles can start as a seed. And I often feel like, you know, this is the type of ace that needs your nurturing. You know, like think about planting a seed. You're not going to plant it and then just walk away and not water it. Make sure it gets enough sunlight. So this is really unlimited potential again. I can take this seed and I can truly grow it really into any anything or any way you want to. It's like it's like divine is just trusting in you to take this seed and grow it. Following that tower. Again, taking that power away from the tower. And then beautiful spiritual strength. You know, this is the Nine of Wands, and this really talks about the ability to reflect back in your life, you know, maybe certain chapters, um, and really understanding it in a spiritual way. You know, I call the person in the Nine of Wands my spirit warrior. A lot of, excuse me, a lot of times you'll see, not in this deck, but you'll see like someone's like busting out of their clothes because of their spiritual muscles that have grown. You know, it's like not allowing life to take you down. Reflection. But it's also, you know, very clear that it's your spiritual team because it's also mirroring that ace of um, wands, passion ignited. Unlimited potential. After the tower, here comes this ace. You know, understanding one's life in a way where I can, I now understand why certain towers happened, happened. You know, certain things we just cannot control. And that's really when we want to hand it over to divine. Don't get lost in really trying to control what you can't control, trying to control other people. So this is the perfect energy that I'd want to see. You know, and nine is about reflection, but it is about final reflection. So it's like some of you are closing a chapter. And when I close that chapter, the Ace of Pentacles, first of all, I feel like you're going to be inspired in some way to maybe create something in some way. And I feel like trust that. No matter what anybody else is telling you, you know, um, certainly in the tower, people could have told you that you won't be good enough, that you aren't good enough, that you're unlovable, all that. Um, but, th but that's all lies. It's all lies. You know, if you put the energy behind anything, then it's going to grow. And I feel like that's what the Ace of Pentacles is saying. And by the way, there's two hands, um, separate hands. They're helping that ace to grow. And it's right under the marriage card, by the way. All right. I'm going to take, I'm going to keep going. I definitely want to see what comes under these aces. You know, I feel like miracles um, are coming through those aces. The chariot's reminding you that you really have unlimited potential. Uh, spiritual strength it's like your team is really helping to usher in like these new changes and yes sometimes a tower has to happen to like move us into place well hello hope 
This is about your 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 um your dreams, your wishes. But this is about them becoming your reality. I'm not really giving signs in this reading because I feel like it it doesn't matter. This is about the energy, you know, hope, keeping hope alive. Um, and I also feel you know in the stars energy. Like we're, we are working hand in hand with divine to create the type of life that we want to be the type of person we want to be. And this is about manifesting it into your world. Interesting because under the ace of wands, again, it is like what's going to feel like a miracle coming true. And look at this movement, decisions, choices under that tower, but mirroring that chariot. You know, I feel like it's saying you just simply need to step into it, whatever it may be for you. Just step into your path. And I feel like the rest will be revealed, you know, maybe bit by bit by bit. But again, it feels like an unlimited time in your life, you know, Bye-bye, tower. Strength card. Power. You know, strength card really talks the ability to overcome anything. He is a Leo and my son's a Leo. So I do want to recognize that. But this, you know, if you just look at the image, um... This person's like half man, half lion. Just means I've tamed that part of myself where, you know, maybe I didn't believe in myself. Maybe I didn't know I could overcome something, but then I do. And it is the power that you carry with you for the rest of your life. Eight is always about a new beginning. It's also the number of infinity as above, so below. No, no beginning, no end. You know, I feel like it's reminding us again that we're spiritual beings having these human experiences. You know, a lot of times we leave that part out. Right under the ace. And then partnerships and alliances. So two threes mirroring each other, First, first of all. Partnerships and alliances. You know, this really talks about your individuality and who you are in this world. And, you know, you are meant to be exactly who you are. I feel like sometimes, like some of these tower moments, it's really what creates our character. Like, without the tower, maybe we wouldn't be as strong as we are. Being proud of who we are. You know, I can't help but notice how these two are holding arms. You know, it's not like they're just shaking hands, like, how do you do? It's almost like a recognition. And that's really what this is about, the recognition of one's soul, the recognition of one's um, individuality. You know, you were, you were created just the way you were meant to be. But I also feel like for some of you, Listen, for some of you, it's definitely talking about your guides helping you. Uh, and I feel like that's for everyone. Um, but for some of you, you can also talk about like someone who is coming into your life who will recognize you for just exactly who you are, like, kind of like a soulmate energy. And I'm not, I'm not even going to say love at this point. It can be any type of soulmate. It can be like the perfect person that comes in that helps me believe in myself again. Um, you know, this is great energy of collaboration, but I feel like there's something special here. There's something special. And by the way, it's mirroring the star on one side and joy above it. You know, it kind of puts even more power in the strength card. Like, I just had to realize that I'm so much stronger than I thought I was. 
And sometimes these towers, um, again, yes, they can be changed. Usually they are some type of change. But then that Ace of Pentacles immediately following that. And that tower is being surrounded by two aces. You know, I love what it's being surrounded by. The Ace of Pentacles or the Ace of Wands, Passion Ignited. The Ace of Pentacles, the way, right? And, and we're going to give you the way. The Chariot, Unlimited Potential. And then the two, Movement, Choices, Decisions. Making that decision to just step into it. Step into it. Hmm. All right. Mental conflict on the bottom. So this is a two of swords. Now it is on the bottom. So to me, that's good news. Um, it's not the eight of swords. It's not a self-created prison. I feel like, you know, this is our humanist where, um, you know, sometimes we can feel like we're blocking opportunities. Um, the two of swords really talks about one who's wearing um, like a blindfold, you know, it could be something I just don't want to face, you know, maybe that's what the tower's talking about, but it really serves you to face it because in a way, you know, like I feel like in a way, is it blocking an opportunity? Well, a little bit, a little bit, but I feel like time, you know, and I also feel like when we take off that blindfold, what we were, what we were afraid of, we realize like, you know, like when we have that blindfold on, like we're afraid of that big bad monster that exists. And then we take that blindfold off and we're like, wait a minute, where's that monster? It's not there. So sometimes we overthink in this energy. Let's see what's below it. Well, hello, judgment. Your spiritual team, truth, you know, and they're calling you to the present moment. You know, interesting how I was talking about that blindfold. You can't see it in this card, but then it says truth. So your own truth. I feel like truth shall set you free. But it's also being called into the present moment. That's why I feel like these aces are here. You know, there's some things that are that are coming you know, your way, um, and they're probably coming through signs, but I do feel like opportunities, really, I feel like w whatever your wish is, it is the ability to really create it, but then the willingness to step into it. I feel like this two of swords is also tying back to the strength card. Again, what was I so afraid of? And then really looking within, right? Finding that balance within ourselves. It is power. And you never lose that. All right. Let's bring in the trivia tarot and let's just go right into it. Let's get deeper. All right, let's give him a cut, introduce him into the reading. Whoa. We have the Seven of Swords. Hmm. All right, so Seven of Swords can certainly talk about someone's untrustworthy energy. Seven of Swords is like the thief in the night. But I have a feeling this is old energy. Um, I have a feeling that this is part of what the tower is. You know, I feel like I, I just get this feeling of like, like I deserve to be treated with respect, dignity, truth. And in this energy, I may not be receiving that. Sometimes it can be our own energy, though. It can be ourselves, like lying to ourselves, telling or telling us that we're not good enough when it's just not true. 
but it can stem from, you know, past energy, past people. You know, I got to know who I'm helping and who I'm not helping. Who deserves to be in my life and who doesn't. I feel like sometimes this can talk about like a narcissistic type of energy. And your guides definitely want you to know that you're not here to fix them. You're not here to fix them. And you won't fix them. So why keep trying? Coming over your material and spiritual prosperity, it's almost like someone is kind of like holding you back from that. And that may be the blindfold, like, yes, maybe it does mean that I've got to cut ties with this energy. But I can already tell you it's going to serve you 100%. We have the Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords to me is someone who is like reclaiming her voice. Someone who's reclaiming her truth. You know, it's interesting she's coming next to the Seven of Swords. Because I feel like I may be having a conversation with someone. You know, um, the Seven of Swords to me is definitely a lower vibrational energy. And I feel like the Queen, and again, I feel like you're all this Queen, male or female. Um, but I do feel like it's like the reclaiming of my power, my truth, my integrity, right? Living life according to my terms. And a lot of times you'll see in this image where you see the queen like doing a mic drop, like the final, like here are my final words and then mic drop. So. The reclaiming of your voice. I feel like there's no sense of fighting if I'm fighting with someone in the Seven of Swords because, again, I'm probably not going to change them. And it's not even my job to change them. And sometimes we have to realize that, you know, some sometimes we have such caring hearts that we want to help, like people in lower vibrational energy. But do we help? You know what I mean? Like, again, if like their hands are out, this is someone who takes more than they need. Takes They take more than their fair share. So I need to know who I'm giving to. Right. But I feel like this is really about you reclaiming, um, again, your voice, your power. We have the beautiful magician, the manifester. And since we have these two aces here, and like what I feel like is the end of a cycle and a tower for some, listen, sometimes I didn't ask for these ends, but it definitely, I you know, down the road, I can look back at that tower and say, thank God for that tower, because look at my life now. And if I never would have, you know, cut those ties would I have been stuck in that Seven of Swords energy? Again, lower vibrational energy. I know many of you who come to these readings, your, spiritual, your spirituality has grown by leaps and bounds. And um, so you're reclaiming yourself, reclaiming your power. You know, again, down here, I feel like no excuses for who you are, right? You are who you were meant to be. And, you know, we grow as we go. So the magician. The magician is the fool's greatest mentor. The magician, and I feel when I say the fool, I'm saying that because of the aces and choices that you're making. However, it's sitting again right next to the star. And the magician really teaches the fool that you truly possess all that you already all that you need to be successful on this next journey on whatever it is you want to do trust within yourself it does talk about leaving the past in the past you know it teaches the fool to take a leap of faith but this is also you and i feel like it's so powerful when we realize that 
you know, these dreams that we want to manifest, when we work hand in hand with divine, you know, like these aces show, but then it's us who step into them. I feel like that's a must. But I also love that this is saying that you are manifesting. We have interesting a seven of cups mirroring the seven of swords. Seven of cups talks about um, choosing a cup. Which cup do I want? And it can feel a little chaotic, but usually the reason why it's chaotic is because the seven of swords probably still has a little bit of, let's just say, energy that's lingering. Even more reason why we need to jump into the fool's energy and take a leap of faith on ourselves. This does talk about, you know, cups coming your way. It's coming over, rejoicing in celebration, right? The three of cups. Joy. So I feel like if I'm worried about taking a cup, even more reason why I need to keep myself in the present moment. Watch for the signs. If I can't trust in myself, trust in your guides. We have the death card. The death card. Um, first of all, I feel like this is talking about for many of us, you know, some loved ones that we lost, but it also is a recognition of them themselves having a rebirth, right? Whatever, let's say they had afflictions here on earth, they no longer have, you know, they really are surrounded in pure love. And for us still on earth, this talks about a closing of a door. But closing that door allows a new door to open. And a new door always opens. Like, I, I know that without doubt. You know, a lot of times you'll see it says death slash rebirth. But can one door open when the other door is not quite shut? It's coming under that seven of swords. And that could just simply say, am I giving my power away? Am I not closing a door because, again, maybe I'm trying to fix someone that I can't, that I'm not meant to. Maybe that is part of their life's journey is to fix themselves. So, open up that new door. The Ace of Wands coming underneath it, the inspiration, the guidance. You know, I feel like it helps you to close that door. And it's mirroring spiritual strength right now. Again, that nine reflection, but final reflection. We're not meant to reflect back forever, right? Just learn what I can learn and then move on. I feel like as spiritual beings, we want to keep moving. We want new experiences. That's the way we came down into this lifetime. Not to allow someone to hold us in place. To stop us from our own miracles, right? Our own aces to open up. Close that door. A new one opens. And it definitely feels like it's helping to guide you. Um, or let's say helping to give you confirmation. I know some of you want me to give you signs, but I just don't feel like this has anything to do with signs. Not this type of reading. Um, this is the energy. We have the Queen of Pentacles over the tower. Interesting, we have two queens. And for some of you, you could talk about, you know, two different sides of yourself. You know, to me, the Queen of Pentacles is someone who truly can read between the lines. You know, she's someone that if you try to hide something from her, she's going to figure it out. She's going to find it. And again, I feel like this is no matter your sign. I feel like you're still, I feel like you're still all people here. Maybe for some of you, you have found that someone was carrying untrustworthy energy. 
and maybe they were trying to keep it from you. And again, it could be, you know, a lover, someone I work with, a family member, whoever it may be. And listen, I'm, I don't even want to put them down. But what I do want to say is I feel like this is their quest. This is something that they have to learn. Like they have to learn to evolve, to raise their own vibration. We can't do it for them. You know, it's reminding me of my son. Um, you know, he had a problem with alcohol. And my God, did I I try. I tried and I tried and I tried. I get him in rehab. I mean, you know what I mean? But it, it was, I now understand that it was his journey. And, you know, you do what you can do. But other than that, I feel like this is just saying that some of you have had these realizations that, again, you know, something is being hidden from you. It, the truth has been found. Now I just got to face it. Now I just got to allow it to be what it is, right? And I know change is never easy. I shouldn't say never. Um, yeah, I shouldn't say never. And also talk about you becoming regrounded after the fact. Hello, Knight of Cups. So interesting because we do have the marriage card right above it with the magician over it. And now the Knight of Cups speaks about unexpected couple fulfillment. Certainly can be love. But it is starting as an ace. And that's probably why I saw two different hands nurturing the same ace. Unexpected couple fulfillment. You know, I can't plan for it. But what I can do is think about where my own vibration is at. Let's say this is love and, and what I want is love. Then I got to think about where am I at? Where's my vibration? Am I ready for real love? True love. Love that can last a lifetime. Eternity. You know, if I'm still stuck back here, putting all my focus on trying to change someone in the Seven of Swords energy and not realizing that I'm not going to be able to do that, right? They have to do it on their own. But that doesn't mean that I shouldn't, like, continue to move forward in my life, that I should, like, not allow dreams to come true. So I feel like though it's unexpected, the more I do think about where my vibration is, you know, in other words, what I mean by that is I haven't closed off my heart. And listen, maybe it's taken some time to get to that point. That's okay. I feel like there's no judgment. Whenever you reach that energy, you reach that energy. Whenever you decide to take that blindfold off, that's when you take the blindfold off. I don't feel like anyone is judging you, right? To each our own. But if I think that love can never happen again in my life, this is telling you that it absolutely can. And it may, again, start as a seed. And it does need nurtured. But look at the magician right above it, the marriage card right above it. Over the Ace of Pentacles. You know, I could have been stuck with somebody for years and years. And I know that's part of my life story where I was stuck with someone for years and years and years until I realized that, you know, I guess I was waiting for someone to come in and save me. And then really, I learned that I could save myself. And by learning that I could save myself simply by leaving, boy, it opened up a whole different side of myself, like the power I felt within that. The two swords again. So some of you are definitely being resistant to closing a door. 
because it is mirroring that. Though your spiritual team is like, you know, we get that, we understand that, but we're here to help you at the same time. Some of you may be afraid to accept one of these cups is coming in, though it's coming in in really joyful type energy. Rip off that blindfold. I feel like there's nothing to fear. Just rip off that blindfold. Listen, even if it means temporarily going through difficult energy, it's temporary. And I feel like ripping off that blindfold, that temporary energy, I feel like it's so temporary. I mean, that's what I feel like our guides are saying here. Some of you could have certainly closed down your heart. And, you know, I get these messages all the time, like, there's no way I'm going to love again. And that is your choice. You know what I mean? That is your choice. But, you know, and I'm not going to judge you on that. If that's what you want, that's what you want. But if in your heart of hearts, it's really not what you want, then I feel like you need to look at, you know, look at your life in a different way. Not everyone is going to love us in the way that we deserve. But listen, maybe in a way, we learned some valuable lessons, right? Maybe one thing we've learned is, like, I'm not going to allow someone in a lower vibrational energy to pull me down, right? If someone wants to be with me, especially because you have indiv your individuality being celebrated, you know exactly who you are. It's like your spiritual team loves you for exactly who you are. And as humans, we are imperfect. So, will I open that door? But it is going to require that a door be closed. And I feel like simply ask yourself, this door that I'm keeping open, why am I keeping it open? Am I just afraid of change? You know, sometimes we feel like we just love someone, but maybe we haven't, haven't experienced like true love yet. All right, let's keep going. Page of Wands. Wow, Page of Wands is my risk taker. This is someone who, you know, when they look at their lives, they can say, or they look back at their lives, they can say, you know what? I've taken a lot of chances in my life and they didn't all work out, but I'm not going to let it stop me from taking more chances. Again, much like my foal, the risk taker, takes these leaps of faith. Um, this is not a fear-based energy. This is an action-oriented type energy. Some of you, it's like your inner child. You know, it's like as we've grown, like we've become more fearful. And we forgot about that inner child who really does want to take these chances. It is coming over the star card. Hope. Dreams, wishes. I feel like it's saying, take a chance on you. We have the tower again. So the tower under the tower, but the tower under or over movement choices and decisions. You know, it's like, as much as I would, I would want to help you, like not allow previous towers to stop you from taking these chances, accepting these aces. I can't do that. It has to come from you. Some of you, I feel like, 
you've learned from these towers. And I could see you then like creating something in your world where you're helping others to overcome these towers. Especially with the Queen of Pentacles right above it. Because again, it's like she can read between the lines. She's very good at um, reading other people's energy. And listen, it's probably taken her a while to get to that point. We have the Four of Cups. So Four of Cups talks about discontentment, boredom in one's life. But the Four of Cups, the real message is, is about using your spiritual discernment, which is a gift from God. Using that spiritual discernment. If I'm unsatisfied anyways, why not take a chance? Right in the four of cups, this person is being offered a cup. Well, you're being offered a cup here. You're being offered all these aces, your wishes, your dreams. And then it's talking about your individuality. The knight of cups definitely bringing a cup in. Coming over the strength card, by the way. And then hello, eight of cups. I feel like that's the perfect energy right now. So the Eight of Cups, um, this is where one is looking within their emotional house, understanding to a point the cups have been knocked over. Taking the blame off yourself. Listen, I'm not saying that sometimes like it's like, you know, that we're perfect and it's all happening to us and it's never our fault. But, you know, we're human. Um, but this is the energy of saying, I'm no longer gonna, going to allow these cups that have fallen over to affect my present moment. I mean, where is this person moving to after the Eight of Cups? The Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups is inner fulfillment. It's also fulfillment of wishes. And again, it's coming over partnerships and alliances. You know, it's almost like the perfect person may come into your life. Again, whether it be love or just to help you in some way. I definitely feel it's soulmate type energy. And again, it doesn't always have to mean love. We have soulmate friends. We have soulmate family members. You know, sometimes a soulmate can be someone you're just walking along the street and... Maybe you got your head down, you're looking at your phone and you're about to get hit by a car and they just push you, you know, push you so you don't get hit. Like, I feel like soulmates come in all different forms. Eight. Another eight. New beginning. You know, makes more sense that the Queen of Swords is saying that I'm really finding, you know, what, what I feel like I'm saying here is I want to live life in my truth, right? I want to recognize who I am and all that I can really do in the world. You know, and it doesn't even have to be major, just what it is I want to do in the world. But I feel like it does take. You know, again, those who carry lower vibrational energy and us not like getting stuck in like, oh, but I can fix them. Well, I don't feel like we can. But then again, I don't feel like it's our quest. It's our journey. That's their journey. You know, doctor, heal thyself. So you have the Seven of Cups mirrored by that Eight of Cups. So making a decision in that Seven of Cups, whether I'm going to accept that cup, Knight of Cups right there, unexpected cup of fulfillment, and then the Eight of Cups. So I feel like this means that someone has ripped off that blindfold. Someone has, has become very truthful with themselves. You know, simply saying that because the Four of Cups is here, like, I'm not satisfied with my life right now. And I do have the power to change that. 
And as these cups or the Knight of Cups, let's say, and these aces move towards you and you're moving towards them. I feel like you will trust more and more. Use your spiritual discernment. Don't use your fear-based mind. You know, like emotional situations that you really had no control over. Sooner or later, we got to let them go. Okay. I don't want to make this real long because I don't feel like it needs to be real long. But I feel like I do want to look at a couple of things. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is go right across the board. You know, you have judgment under that two of swords that literally says, what, honesty, truth. And then you have Archangel Raphael, acceptance. Accept the truth for what it is. And that's only going to serve you. Close those doors. We have the four of pentacles. You know, to me, the Four of Pentacles talks about really becoming grounded in one's life. But I also feel the Four of Pentacles can sometimes talk about being resistant to change, being resistant to anybody else's ideas but my own. You know, again, there may be like the perfect person is coming in that can help you to evolve, that can help make some dreams come true. And then judgment so they made it to the board your spiritual team you know and it's like they're saying we know you've experienced these towers we know that but we also know that you are stronger than these towers judgment again is calling you to the present moment why because these are where your signs are sent not in the past, not in the future, right here, right now. And I know for many of you, this reading is your sign. So, present moment energy. And it's so that a, a rebirth can take place, especially if some of you are in that Four of Cups energy, discontentment and boredom. And even if you're in that energy, it's like these aces still want to show, right? These cups still want to come in. Judgment is like, we're going to make sure that you see the signs, you know, and don't be afraid to like, if you think like something was your sign, like let's say this reading, like, is this for me? Certainly ask your guides to make it clear to you. You know, in any way you see fit. You know, it's interesting. Like when I do a reading and then like when I'm done for the day and I'm sitting down watching TV with Sam, many times, like let's say a title that I gave a reading that day, I'll, I'll see those exact words in, in, on TV. And, you know, at first it used to blow my mind, like, wow, like literally I just named a title to one of my readings. That's exactly what I named it. But now I just like, uh-huh. Yep, there it is. Sign, sign, everywhere, sign. All right. Hello, destiny. Wheel of fortune. Not just a wheel, a wheel of fortune. Coming over that Ace of Pentacles. That Ace of Pentacles may start as a seed, but it can turn into the most beautiful tree. Um, you know, this is your destined path. This is probably the, you know, experiences, good and bad, that your soul wanted to experience. Why would my soul want to experience bad 
situations so that I can learn, so that I can evolve. That's what we're here for. Earth is our classroom. Evolution. Growing. Learning. Right? Caring about ourselves. Caring about our fellow man. You know, it's like your spiritual team is saying, my dear, this is part of your destiny. And it's right next to the Knight of Cups also. So let's let's take a couple more. Hello, lovers. So now I kind of feel like that Knight of Cups is talking about love. Now, let's talk about the meaning of the card first. The meaning is ahead of a heart decision. Do I follow my head or do I follow my heart? Well, here, your head is in the Two of Swords. So I feel like follow your heart. Follow your heart. You know, when the lover shows, I feel chemistry. And by the way, it's coming over the night of cups. Unexpected cup of fulfillment. Now it's being even more clear that the potential of it being love is very good. And it's right next to the wheel. It's right next to your destiny. It's interesting because it makes me look at that seven of swords even more now. Because again, this person, this energy is of lower vibrational energy. And I do feel like I probably got stuck in it for a while, right? I probably gave away my voice, my power. But I feel like as your spirituality grows, so does your voice. So does your power. And we have the star. Wow. Someone's like, do I want to take any more? Do I want to take any more? And by the way, the four cups, that cup is being offered. And I often feel like that cup is coming in through the four of cups. It's coming from the hand of God. And then look at the magician above uh, mirroring that. Again, the magician to me is the fool, which I feel like is his page of wands, telling this person, like, you already possess everything you need to be truly successful. There may just be a, a few lingering energies. Rip off those blindfolds, close those doors that really aren't serving you anyways. Allow a rebirth to take place. Judgment is saying, bring yourself into the present moment. There's something that's opened, opening up that is just part of your destiny. And for many of you, it does feel like love. But I'm not going to say just love because I feel like it's also talking about like opportunities um, and even trusting in yourself to create the type of life you want. For some of you, it's creating a business. It's, it's like these epiphanies coming to you, but then you, you moving into action. Even if there's a little fear, doing it anyway, I feel like that always pays off. All right, one more time. Well, we have the Five of Cups. But then look at this, the Ten of Cups. No wonder I wanted to go one more time. So let's talk about the Five of Cups. You know, it's interesting because we have the five, which makes me feel like, first of all, five is change. This is the energy where I really am focusing on my past. Um, I'm focusing on the cups that have been knocked over. The danger in this energy is I can get lost in it. You know what I mean? It can turn into woe is me. And I mean that in the most loving way, but it is a fact. You know, we can just be like, you know, and it can relate to those who say, I don't want love again. And again, it's your choice. It's your choice. But I do feel like it's talking about loss. But then look what follows it. The Ten of Cups. This is the house of love. The house of harmony, laughter, joy. We have joy right there. You're not alone in this energy. 
You're not alone in this energy. Can we reach this Ten of Cups? Yes. Just take off that blindfold. You know, it reminds me of like how long it took me to say yes to Sam about moving in with him. It took me five years. I had to work through all these things within my own head, my own heart. But now, I just, thank God I did. You know, not all love is going to work out the way that we hoped that it would. But that doesn't mean that love is done. Love is over. And by the way, I do feel like this is speaking about, like, the potential of new love coming into your life. Even if it's someone you already know. I do not feel like it's this person. I feel like the Seven of Swords is the energy that the door's got to be closed to that. But I feel like it's just saying, and interesting because here's the Eight of Cups, right? I'm looking within that emotional house and I'm closing, you know, I'm just looking at the cups that have fallen over just to understand myself within love, myself within emotional situations. Again, Eight is allowing oneself to have a new beginning and look at everything that opens up. Not only did your spiritual team jump from here onto the table it brought out the wheel which is your destiny the knight of cups is right underneath it so are these aces the five of cups yes we've all been there we've all been through that but look how you recoup to the ten of cups maybe you never had the ten of cups yet maybe you've just never had it yet and i kind of felt that like for some, like we may not have experienced love, just like I feel like with Sam and I, like I really haven't experienced love the way that him and I do. And do I think it was a miracle? I, listen, I 100% feel like my son helped bring Sam and I together. Because otherwise I may have stayed in that energy of sorrow. You know, it's like my son was saying, Mom, your life isn't over yet. You still have a lot of living and loving to do. And he was right. Oh, I didn't even see this card. Three of Wands. Wow. Three of Wands is an optimistic view. Three of Wands is someone who's living in the present moment. And they're saying, I know that my ships are going to come in. I know these miracles are are going to happen. And until they do, I'm just going to enjoy this present moment. I'm going to find reasons to celebrate right here, right now. Even if it's just simply that the sun came up this morning. You know, it's just that spiritual knowing that your ships will come in right when they're meant to. Again, destiny. The night or judgment, present moment. To me, that that's a clue that this is not talking about something that's, that's going to happen years from now. But I do guess it's up to us in a way, right? Because I feel like if I never close that door, does it even allow this new door to open? Because it doesn't feel like part of my destiny. Now, Maybe I was meant to go through that energy so that I could really learn about myself, so that I could grow into the person that I am. And I feel like that's what your spiritual team wants you to, wants you to know about yourself, like being proud of exactly who you are today. Even those broken little pieces, you know, they will fade away. Love. Feels like it wants to enter your do enter in your door. The magician, can I manifest these dreams? Well, I feel like when I work hand in hand with divine, the answer is yes all day long. And many of them are sitting upon your destiny anyway. Trust. 
especially if you're discontent with your life right now. Make the changes. Follow the signs. Believe in yourself again. Even if I'm not looking for anyone at this point, think about where my own vibration is. Reclaiming yourself, your voice, your truth. And then, as these aces reach you, then you may make very different decisions than you would have if that door never closed. And I think I'm going to leave it right there. Wow. I thank our guides. I thank Steve. This is in his beautiful memory that I'm doing this reading. Um, I thank you. I am so grateful for each and every one of you, truly. And um, I am grateful for our guides. I'm grateful for our big soul family. Because that's what I feel like we all are. Even those who are new, I feel like welcome. Welcome to our soul family. We're so happy you're here. No limits. Only potential. And then the willingness to take the action needed. And just watch what opens up for you. Just watch. Miracles. Caring, but caring about yourself first. Others and the world. Acceptance. And then what else? Meditation. And alternative medicine. You know, it, that almost doesn't fit, but I feel like for some of you, you know exactly why it's here. So I'm just, I'm going to leave that be. I'm going to leave it be. Um, thank you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for um, allowing me to do these type of readings. And, you know, it's interesting because I wasn't even going to work today, but then I just felt so pulled to doing this reading and I am so glad I did. It's made me feel better. And um, for some of you, I feel like it's your guiding light. All right, I'm going to stop talking. I love you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.